Hello and welcome to the Polymath Quest. I am Guillermo Valle, a mathematical physics graduate, now doing a PhD in systems biology. And I've always been curious about everything and wanted to learn and explore everything in the world. And since a long time, I've wanted to share with everyone all the things I learned and discovered simply because I think they're awesome, but also because I think that people should be able to participate in science and technology and, you know, the universe. And so this is what I'm going to try to do in this channel. In any case, in this first series, I'm just starting. We're going to explore statistical physics. I'm choosing this subject because I think it's very cool and I think there is not much nice material on YouTube explaining it. I'm going to more or less follow the lecture notes by Alex Checkin which was my professor who taught me all of this initially. Though sometimes I may digress into some interesting new applications because the truth is that statistical physics is now applied in so many things, which is one of the things that make it exciting. And so to kick in, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the motivation and the history of the subject. So, hope you have fun. A statistical physics is the study of physical systems which require a statistical description that is one in terms of probabilities. Now, why will we need to use probabilities? Well, it's not hard to see. The world is extremely complex, chaotic even. It often looks disordered, even completely random. It's not surprising that uncertainty should enter the description of all such phenomena. The nature of this uncertainty, however, varies. Sometimes it comes from computational limitations. Other times, however, it comes from fundamental aspects of nature, like quantum mechanics. One can view statistical physics as one of the latest blows to our classical notions of perfection. From the celestial spheres of Ptolemy to the totally deterministic world of Laplace, science has been and still is showing us that nature is weirder and more complex than our simplified views pretend. As one may expect from this, the development of statistical physics was quite agitated, accompanied by the ever-present conflict between the stark reality and our most profound expectations. On the 19th century, our view of the physical world was based on deterministic descriptions of matter, which was taken to be a continuous substance aptly described by the elegant tools of calculus. This way we could describe everything from how heat, sound and electricity travel through a body to the ways bodies move, vibrate, stretch, deform, radiate and all the ways these effects could interact. In similar ways we could describe the complex movements of fluids with limited but impressive success. The state of physics at the end of the century was one of such success and establishment that Lord Kelvin famously said there's nothing new to be discovered in physics now, all that remains is more and more precise measurement. There were a few small problems here and there, but far from being small patches like Lord Kelvin would have expected, they were actually going to bring the biggest revolutions in physics since Isaac Newton. The first of these problems led to statistical physics. You see, despite the unity that these equations brought into our view of the universe, they were plagued with material constants, quantities which varied from material to material. Copper had a certain value of thermal conductance and another for electrical resistance and young modulus and so on, and they were all different from those of iron, gold and wood and all the infinitude of materials known and yet to be known. This mess of constants contrasted starkly with the unity of the equations describing their behaviors. As a matter of fact, there were many kinds of materials which didn't really follow the idealized equations. These materials challenged our notions of phases of matter, of elasticity, 
and of the nature of matter itself. It was this problem that a statistical physics solved, no small feat, and it did so by positing a hypothesis that goes back to the Greeks, that matter is made out of atoms. Despite its long history, this atomic hypothesis was viewed by most scientists as nothing more of a nice philosophical idea, nothing to do with reality. At the end of the day, you could never see atoms, they are by definition too small, at least we thought. And you know, I refuse to accept anything that I cannot see, that's unscientific. One should then appreciate the courage of those that did defend this hypothesis. Among them, Maxwell himself, but by far the biggest figure in this war was Ludwig Boltzmann. He basically dedicated his life to showing the scientific community that atoms were real. We will not deal here with all the convoluted arguments that followed, but the fact is that despite taking his own life on the way, he won. And what we will see here is his legacy.